new content regarding Final Fantasy 7. What do you think? What did you find out? As we get closer to Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis releasing, the official Twitter page has been releasing more and more information that's pretty valuable sorry, in sorry, the grand scheme sorry, of things sorry. that looks to be affecting a whole lot of stuff. First things first, we gotta talk about the rewards. And of course, if you guys have been loving the Final Fantasy content, hit that subscribe button and notification bell because things are getting hot. We're gonna be the best place to be for all things Ever Crisis and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth related coming through the rest of... I hope so. By the way, I love your Tifa sticker. Good job, man. But Jessica is still the best waifu. Jessie is still the best waifu <laughs> at the moment. But the best waifu is always the one that's, I don't know. Anyways. Here, you don't want to be anywhere else. Help raise that 19% even higher. Now, with that being said, let's get into the video. So if you look at the rewards, additional pre-registration, we talked about this briefly in the pre Oh, that's right. Okay, so I just saw an Instagram post about, like, a review about seven things you should know. Um, but, yeah, apparently uh, there's a lot, of, there's millions of, like, pre-registrated people that's good previous video but i wanted to give an official update we have reached 1.2 million registered users so again shout out to all you guys for doing that 1.5 million is up next and you'll see we for get a gear uh, free vouchers. outfit for a character however shout out to dashing david for pointing this out he actually he posted this on twitter if you look at it it does say exchange voucher a gear voucher if you will which typically means you get to select what specific armor it is you want rather than it being a random pull if it wasn't and i'll be one to say it I'm going to use my gear vouchers for the female uh, outfits. So if there's anything for Jesse, anything for Tifa and Aerith, or Yuffie, I will use my gear voucher for that. I will say that straight up. I I have no shame. They look much more beautiful than... Uh, unless there's dress cloud. If I can have dress uh, cloud in his disguise, I will do that. Ticket, it would be a random pull because it's just back funny, a bit, but you can see during the previous one, Dash and David also know. pointed this out. It actually did say gear ticket right here, it was a battle gear ticket, so it was a random choice. And I guess they must have changed that going forward. So, shout outs to Applebot and Square Enix. So, at the one at the 1.2 million mark, we are gonna get um, Masam rewards up to 700,000 users. So there's like crystals, draw tickets, and jump starter item sets. Okay, great. So we're gonna start off pretty good. Um, we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat good, guys. For that, that's an amazing change. So now it doesn't seem like we'll have to uh, randomly pray and hope that we get the outfit we want. It looks like we'll be able to select exactly which one we want out of whatever is available. Because I will dress up Tifa or Aerith first. If Jessie you can be played in your team, I will dress her up. She is quite nice. At least. That's what I perceive in the new remake in the in uh, Final Fantasy Seven Re Final Fantasy Seven remake. She's become a tease, um, but still the best waifus are the ones that can fight by your side, which are either Yuffie, maybe Aerith and Tifa, definitely. Because it is an exchange voucher. I'm predicting that we will hit this number in probably less than a week from recording this video. And the new reward is 1.7 million users, which uh, we've been absolutely crushing their expectations. They have no idea what to put as of right now for this reward. It'll be announced at a later date. I, I mean, sure, like for a reward, I would... I, because remember, this is a mobile game. So I'll be playing it like on a mobile device-esque thing. So everybody knows it. But the point is... I don't know what to expect other than like maybe giving us more time to play the game, giving us like a boost in experience, uh, a, a, an experience boost would be nice. If not more chances for the gotcha, but experience boost is what I would like, what I would prefer. Who knows? Maybe if we hit this as well and there's enough time, we could probably see them raise it up to 2 million, but I don't know. We'll have to see on that case. If you ask me, they'll probably let this be a gear voucher. Maybe we'll be able to pull a five star of whatever weapon it is that we choose, just like how the. Yeah, so like, yeah, maybe like that wouldn't be a bad idea because like if you, if we get a better chance at a at a five star, six star weapon, that would definitely boost our chances and experience in the beginning of the game. But the problem is because the new like Sephiroth like segments get introduced three characters i'm hoping the weapons can be splashable like in its own way because if we have to roll gotcha for say cloud weapons cloud can use the same weapon as um zach which is fine but if they're going to make it so that 
these uh, these new characters can play weapons in the same category. Like if I can, if one of them has a great axe in the trailer for the new um, segment, if that great axe guy was weapon, if I can use that great axe on Cloud and on Zack maybe that's going to be a great way like yo not only can you have a great sword you can play a great axe but i i do see that as a good chance to help other people because if you want the five star weapon for your favorite character please do so otherwise i want the ability for weapons to be used across all games because i'm not going because if i start out with the Sephiroth story i don't want those item blocked to those characters i wanted it to be used across my enjoyment of the entire app the outfit setup is which i think is perfect and they should consider if not it might be some more gems and crystals to summon i want gems and crystal that's that's safer weapon, that's safer to but do either way that's not been announced yet we'll have to wait on that but the main reason why i made this video and i'm making this video is because of this tweet that they put out here introducing the game's story experience an entirely new story feature and the young hero Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII First Soldier, along with the original Final Fantasy VII and Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. Enjoy the new story in bite-sized chapters, featuring characters both new and old. But the interesting thing about this, and if we look at the trailer, which I'll watch it here with you guys. Ah, the music is amazing. I can't wait to see this uh, Sephiroth character model in action. What this is going to be really cool, because like what I'm hoping, it, it's a big leap in logic, but what I'm hoping from this game is it'll show motives of the Sephiroth we're seeing right now because if you if you believe in the theory of the of the twin uh timeline the if the the, the dual timeline theory what we're experiencing in Final Fantasy 7 remake and rebirth is a retelling of air like the the real the real protagonist is Aerith and Sephiroth because the idea is that they went back in time and they were they used to have been stuck in a perpetual like cycle but Sephiroth wanted to change his um, narrative so I'm, I'm hoping that this is the guy that we f that finishes the original timeline of Final Fantasy 7 goes back in time for remake and is messing with Sephiroth early because as you've seen at the end of the Midgar arc in the beginning of the game that's a different outcome from the original timeline in Final Fantasy 7 from 1997 that's a completely different timeline we're in going into a new timeline especially when we've looked at the trailer from rebirth because there's two timelines happen there's two timelines happening at the same time where you see a totally different Barrett Aerith and Tifa being pull, being uh, shuffled into helicarriers because they are injured. That's a very different group of people from what we see coming out of the caves and our compadres. Because I already talked in the links about that one. But I'm hoping this reveals, this new game reveals more information. And I want a better connection to Rebirth and Remake than... Uh, Crisis Core Reunion was. Because Crisis Core could have been the game that tied the new timeline together. It's It did not, but it's still a very good game. What it's actually going to play like in battle and stuff. We more than likely will either be battling with him, against him, all that stuff. So, see the three stories are available. They're showcasing a lot of the older stuff at this point, but I'm going to pause. Okay, so right here. This is the end of chapter three. We know that uh, the original Final Fantasy VII story is going to be 10 chapters. And Nomura said in an interview that chapter three basically will detail them um, going through Shinra and escaping Midgar. So this is probably most likely the end of chapter three, which looks really cool. It's a callback to the key arts. Yeah, so Final Fantasy VII Remake, this was the key art that they had mm -hmm. uh, when that game first came out. And then, and this is, again, like, again, this is the, this looks like to be a retelling of the this right here see my mouse this is going to be the retelling of the original timeline in Final Fantasy 7 1997 however in the new rebirth trailer in the new re, uh, remake game this did not happen kind of this happened after the fight with Sephiroth in that cloud 
of Canon buff. Yeah, but when who's Instagram say? came out, they actually updated the key art, which is kind of funny. It's like the backwards shot of that angle. <laughs> and now we kind of get a look at it and what it seems like it'll be like in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis for the Final Fantasy VII OG story, which is cool. Love seeing the new stuff. This is some older stuff that we've already seen. Crisis Core moments with Zack. Uh, but there is some new stuff that comes up very soon. Uh, like, okay, so Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier, um, I thought was a mobile game, which is in Battle Royale-esque. So, but this, uh, this new game is going to be the story prior to Final Fantasy VII, if we didn't have one already. But this is, but these three characters, the blonde guy should have a great axe, and if I can pull a great axe, I don't want my, uh, gacha pulls to be soft locked to characters even though i know it's gonna be first soldier stuff if you guys haven't yet i already played through the first chapter of the first soldier story it was pretty interesting nothing really crazy happened but it definitely left it on a cliffhanger that is actually up on the channel right now feel free to go check that out as you go through it okay right here uh <laughs> character stories it looks like they're going to be implementing more detailed backstories of the characters we all know and love for those that know how the story of Final Fantasy VII unfolds, this uh, cowboy hat is Tifa's from the mm -hmm. Nibelheim flashback, or the Nibelheim moments from like it was five years prior. And of course, this is Cloud's infantry helmet that he was wearing and using to hide himself from appearing to uh, Tifa because he was embarrassed. And it's really and like I really want to see how Rebirth touches on this idea, because when Cloud is telling the details of the Nibelheim incident in explicit detail. It's traumatic to Tifa because Tifa never saw a cloud. So she's going to be in a situation where she's processing that trauma. Because this game, this entire series is about, is covering topics about traumatic uh, loss and trauma from events. Because in the Nibelheim incident, Tifa was a witness to everything. She attempted to attack Sephiroth. And then was gravely injured if it weren't for the elder who brought materia to help her and that's going to be re and that was reiterated in crisis core and crisis core reunion however for cloud to remember these details about the nibaheim incident in, in grand detail she is so scared to wonder if he's telling the truth because he is a amnesic character where some things in his memories don't add up and he is trying to figure that out he's trying to figure out his own canon but he knows this canon so particularly so for tifa to be at odds with cloud who has questionable memory to know this in explicit detail puts her memory into question and i'm excited to see how this will affect the timeline and the characters that we're currently in not 1997, but this one. Love the way that they stack them on each other. Tifa, I'm going to be a mercenary. Also included are stories with brand new characters, as well as sub-stories featuring more familiar faces. We saw a brief glimpse of this in the beta, where we got extra chapters for Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. Those missions were completely those brand new and gave us a whole new look into those characters with their backstories and whatnot, which I, which I thought was a really cool addition. But if you look right here, we got... Tifa and uh, Jesse moments right here. Uh, this actually looks like the plates, face of the plates from Remake, where they go up and Jesse, Biggs, Wedge die, and then eventually allegedly, the allegedly, because in the new timeline, it looks like one of them or all of them survived, but in the proper title, they actually died. I believe this seems to be another story moment right now, where Tifa and Jesse are having a heart to heart. It's kind of funny. Tifa's doing the one hand hug, the awkward. <laughs> But we can do whatever we put our minds to as long as we work together. This moment that we're seeing right here seems to be a moment from Traces of Two Past, which if you don't know, is the light novel that was created by Kazushi Nojima detailing backstories of Tifa and Aerith. It is absolutely canon to the story, and it's really cool that we're going to get some visual representation of those missions That's in really Ever Crisis. Cool. I like that That's a lot. That's so cool. Uh, it's gonna be, it seems like it's going to be this moment right here where Tifa reunites with Jesse, but the location turns out to be a Shinra ambush. And this is basically where Jesse, Barrett, and Tifa kind of come together to sort of form Avalanche. I'm not going to spoil too much of that. You should definitely check out Traces of Two Past if you guys haven't yet. And uh, this is exactly what they're showcasing us right here. And then right here, this is actually another Traces of Two Past moment with Aerith. We get backstories of Aerith about her upbringing, her childhood, living and well being trapped in the Shinra Tower and her mother being experimented on and all that stuff. 
Yeah, because if I remember correctly, Aerith's backstory includes her living at the at the Shinra like site for the for the longest of times, and at some point she escapes and is a flower girl that lives at the church. That's what we've discovered, but like we don't know about that until we read the book. But when we meet her for the first first time, is an ever crisis selling flowers meeting Zach. She's asking, Mom, when can we go on a picnic? You'll definitely have to read more of that when Eric's story has some pretty brutal moments. I just wonder exactly how much more of that are they going to showcase to us? Because it is quite a lot, and I absolutely love that. While I am excited to be playing Ever Crisis and experiencing the story of Final Fantasy VII again in a different way, I love the characters, I love the changes, and I love the new direction that they seem to be going in so much to the point where this type of stuff, it really excites me. Being able to see brand new story moments and such with these characters that I absolutely love, get a little bit more of an insight to their backstory, what they went through. That is what I absolutely love and I'm looking forward to it. And Because I really, because like, yes, he is absolutely right. I want to live in this world so much more. I want to see Roche again from Final Fantasy Remake, but to feel these characters more lived in, to feel more personal, I want this to do that because people have been, com people have been complaining that Final Fantasy seem Final Fantasy VII Remake is not their Final Fantasy VII. That is not the point. If you want the original, if you want the original retelling, done. If you want the original game done one for one, you're asking for a remaster. This is a retelling. This is the director and the game designer getting free reigns to tell the same story with a mirror where things can be where things are allowed to be different. The journey to the end will be different or the same. We won't know yet because everything we've done till now, this five minute, this five hour segment turned into a 40 hour experience, 100 hour experience for some people where the, it expanded on the mundane, it expanded on the tidbits of the original uh, timeline. And, you f and I want to experience that more. I don't mind them stretching out this title if it means you living in the world more. And I could read the, t the book about Tifa and Aerith. I could read things about every other character. But it doesn't change the fact that this is a brand new retelling. This is a situation where we are going to see different shades of characters. We're going to see, like good things great things from these characters so i'm really excited to see like what they're going to expand on in the mobile game i want them to do that and i want to see what they're going to expand in the new title which is going to be very exciting in rebirth also guys i mentioned in the previous video too this is part one, one of the you shush i do not like you however this is fine i'm sure you're you're uh you're getting your money by the doing these uh ads, but shh, more Final Fantasy. Absolutely, want to, what I absolutely love and I'm looking forward to. It. And also, guys, I mentioned in the previous video too. I absolutely want to help you all out that are all around the world trying to play this game. But unfortunately, it is not. Okay. You can use top, you can use NBA, and I will keep. I can get play it. But and on top of the player during the beta, the exciting emulator news. I got a comment from somebody that said LD player during the beta worked flawlessly for them. Uh, I can't wait. OG Vincent in his turkey uniform. Removing stamp position cap. I'm getting closer. LD player has no crashes during beta. LD player? I don't know what that is. I have played on blue stacks. I found the configurations to play on blue stacks. But I can look into LD player. Compared to blue stacks. Blue stacks crashed a lot. We saw that a lot with Max. We saw it a lot in our own playthroughs. Uh, but LD player was pretty flawless going all the way through. Now, I actually booted up LD player and tried out Pokemon Unite for a little bit on it. And I randomly, I was like, you know what? I want to I see if this thing can do 144 hertz. And it does. It does 144 hertz. I don't know how. I don't know why. But it does an amazing job. I tried to upscale to 4K, but it doesn't seem like it made a difference. And it was just running harder for no reason. So I just kept it at 1080p with 300 DPI. And the settings seem you know, pretty optimal. I can I'll honestly put it, it up to 8 cores, 8,000 MB RAM. But... I didn't really notice a tutorial on how to get that set up, how to work it properly, but it's pretty straightforward. As long as you have your Google account and you pre-registered on it, you'll be able to play it. Now, shout out to Legions Gaming. That's another friend of mine that does make content. He'll be also making content on Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. He makes videos on all kinds of other gotchas too. He also did the Blue Stacks emulator tutorial for Ever Crisis last month, but he actually created a controller preset that he'll be linking on his channel when it does release keyboard. You can 
to play Ever Crisis on your PC with this emulator. You don't have mm -hmm. to do that with mouse and keyboard. You can try to check out his channel. Uh, also, exciting. We're going to be getting new story moments, stuff from Traces of Two Past today with Ever Crisis. I think that's pretty exciting. We're going to be getting new story moments, stuff from Traces of Two Past, maybe some new implementations. I think it's going to be a good ride. For those that think that 10 chapters isn't that long, just wanted to put this into perspective. For Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, the beta, we played the first two chapters, and one chapter has about four sub chapters in it. And it did take about three hours for us to beat that first chapter. Okay, so that's pretty nice. So, um, as he explained, like, even though Final Fantasy VII is going to be told within ten chapters, if he took a couple hours to finish just one chapter alone, that makes sense. That's great. That's great for me because that's still content you can milk. But also the idea that, it show it gives us a, like a relative time frame of like how things are gonna work, because I want to enjoy this game and feel like I can complete each section within a reasonable amount of time, versus being able to play a forty hour, seventy hour experience. Because let me tell you, the original Final Fantasy VII is a lot longer than just a mere thirty hours, like. It's, it's a lot. And the second chapter was a little bit shorter. I would say probably two hours, maybe two and a half hours. Probably because we were a little bit more overpowered and we kind of like were speeding through bosses and stuff. But the length of it is going to be pretty chunky. And I don't think all 10 chapters will be available. As RPG sites said that they heard, they might have misheard or the person that they spoke to did not know. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. After talking with some people from Square Enix, it seems like it'll be the first two chapters, maybe first three chapters. And then every month we can expect something new coming forward. Look for Yeah, because like they want to stretch out the content for the content. But in terms of length per chapter of two, three hours, a couple hours is fine because if you if you think about the way the original game was uh, cut up, our five hour content of the original game turned into a 40 hour experience of learning the culture, learning characters, learning development and learning how some things aren't done. Uh, lining up in the original timeline it's great for storytelling so please take your time forward to finally seeing sid and vincent and ketchy are being showcased for the first time during a rebirth trailer who knows maybe they're during gamescom maybe there's a playstation state of play event coming up and also maybe tgs I feel like tgs is a pretty good shot for that but we will be streaming all of those and paying attention to it so be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are okay i will say this is a pretty good video i like the way uh, Blitz Z like uh, covered it. Good like. I will put a link in the video in the description down below. But yeah, but yeah, this was a very good coverage of the game. I'm really excited to see where this goes from here because I love Final Fantasy. Um, I grew up with it. I had the chance to play. I I can double check and see how the uh PlayStation Three will boot up. Because if I can play Final Fantasy VII right now through, like, wires and uploading, uh, up, uh, upside in PlayStation 3 game, like, I'm sure, I think it's still downloaded at the moment, but I'm really excited to see how this goes. Final Fantasy VII is my bread and butter, along with Monster Hunter, and I'm really excited to see what happens. Uh, let me know what your thoughts, let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you next time.